I've, I've been to about 14 film festivals all over the United States and Canada, and I think there's, I've been completely blown away and inspired by a lot of the work that's being done, especially these small, struggling, um, gay and lesbian health organizations and AIDS organizations and gay community organizations that are really doing their best under difficult circumstances to keep the message of safe sex out there, to keep the message of the importance of gay men caring about each other and their sexual partners out there. I'm just uh, uh, overwhelmed by, you know, even in the smallest towns, the, uh, the energy and the people who, who are keeping the message alive. I think when you move away from the community level and you get more towards the national level, and as the budgets for safe sex education get bigger and bigger, what happens is they lose the effect, they lose, they become one size fits all. I mean, they make everyone aware of safe sex in a general way, but what they lose is the kind of graphic, erotic, anal centric, gay, male, um, celebratory, uh, celebration of gay male sex that needs to be talked about and and um, and written about and depicted and and I mean I really think we have to celebrate anal sex and then talk to gay men about what the risks are so I think what takes courage and what takes um, political will is to focus our energies where it's needed most and that is sexually active urban gay men who uh, engage in receptive anal, receptive anal intercourse with partners whose status isn't known. If we could find a way to speak to them and reach them, we would make a huge impact on, on what's been going on. I would say that um, gay men live their lives in many different ways, and gay men um, should have the right to marry, should have the right to um, celebrate their sexuality, um, and to choose and create their own journey through life, including the choice of non-monogamy. I think that one thing that AIDS taught us was that when, and I'm speaking from personal experience, when caring about your partner becomes separated from sexually, from sexually connecting with your partner, bad things can happen. Not always, depending on what you do, bad things can happen. You have to, you can't separate caring about your partner um, from the sexual act itself. Um, I'm, I'm concerned that, I mean, I, I'm sympathetic that the last eight years under Bush has really created a very chilling climate in, uh, in which to do safe sex education. I, I understand that people work hard and do their best and don't want to lose their funding, but I'm concerned that most of the messages that have been out there for quite a long time have been uninspired, bordering on scolding, they're not the kind of radical, porn, you know, erotic, graphic, celebratory, um, safe sex messages that were that were out there in the late 1980s. I would also point out that um, it's important for this work to be done. It's important for gay men to do it. Um, I don't. Th I think even though HIV infections seem to be on the rise, you know, I don't think you know the sky is falling. I think. It's, we're moving in the wrong direction, but I don't think it's awful. I don't think it's, it's drastic. I don't think it's terrible. I think it's a sign of what Dr. Sonnenbaum once, once said, which is that every new infection is a failure of prevention. And the other half of that story is that, the, you know, that we need to do more courageous work you know, to reach young gay men about safe sex. The other half of it is this ridiculous myth that once you become HIV positive, um, it's too late for safe sex. In other words, this myth that safe sex is just about HIV, I think we really need to th rethink that. 
there are certain other sexually transmitted virus and infections that are bad for your immunological health, that tax your immune system, that um, whether you're HIV positive or HIV negative, safe sex when you're engaging in receptive anal intercourse with partners whose status you don't know is still an important thing to do uh, to protect yourself because, th because there are other um, um, challenges to your health. The reason I'm still here in good health is because I took the advice of Dr. Joseph Sonnevend. And a lot of his writing and a lot of his ideas are on the internet. And I strongly urge anybody who cares about these issues or, or cares about safe sex or cares about knowing more, um, just Google Dr. Sonnevend. That's the reason I'm here today. Um, I'd like to be remembered as someone who, you know, to quote Michael Callan, who um, loved being gay, who, um, who I just, I'm so grateful that I, you know, I came of age right after the gay liberation movement began. I was young, I was energetic, I cared about making the world a better place. I got off my butt, I got active, I became an activist, I celebrated sex, I fell in love, I danced many nights away. I mean, I just, I'm so grateful that my life coincided with the period of gay history that was just extraordinary, extraordinary. And I know some people think it was a time that was so extraordinary that it was worth dying for. I don't think it was worth dying for. I think it was worth living for. And it does, doesn't really take that much to protect your health and to protect the health of your partners to make, you know, the wonderful fabulousness of gay life, you know, go on as long as you can.